episode of Beating Alpha. We have episode 67, uh, and today we have a very interesting guest. Uh, as I told Nick before, I've been stalking him a little bit on Facebook because uh, he's putting out really good content that you should go and uh, get in contact with him, you know, on Facebook, Adam as a friend, and Nicholas Nick. So he's a serial entrepreneur uh, about 18 income streams that this man is having. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an interesting conversation with this man, as, as you probably, probably know from here. So he's a former restaurant manager, a real estate education executive turned entrepreneur uh, through a very successful lead generation company, uh, which you can go and find on Facebook is Lead Miners and on Instagram, lead.mining. So welcome to the show, Nicholas. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank thanks. you for having me. Thanks, thanks, thank you. So where do we start? I mean, 18 income streams, man. That's, uh, that sounds like a you know, good position to be in during these times, you know? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. You know, um, you know those, all those streams of income, you know, I would say there's one that makes it a breadwinner right? And that would be the lead generation company that, you know, you spoke about. That's the one that's really giving me the wealth, if you will. Um, all of the other ones, almost all 17 of the other ones, in my opinion, I created so I can live my life almost in like a retirement phase, you know? Um, you know, yeah, if, yeah. well, you in, know Florida, if, in Florida, on a beach, it looks like you're in retirement right now. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, I bought a house on the water out here. You know, that's the ocean right there. Um, we've got like a tiki hut, you know, and, you know, I, I just learned that, you know, I don't, as an entrepreneur, I, I, I can't stop hustling no matter what, you know, and as an entrepreneur, I really, I don't want to, everything I create, I don't want it to take my time. You know, not, not everything, not everything is fun. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah. and so I only really want to do what's fun. However, I don't want to leave money on the table, you know, and so every opportunity I get, I take, you know. Um, so, for example, um, I, I have a personal chef who works 40 hours a week for me. And the other day I saw a Facebook post about someone wanting a catering job. And I'm like, hey, uh, I'll do your catering, <laughs> right? Um, like, I already have a full-time chef. I don't even have to do anything. You know, the good news is, I, as you said, I ran restaurants for 16 years. So yeah. it's not like the catering is new to me <laughs> by any means. You know, it's, it's in my wheelhouse. However, you know, I'm about to make $400 profit on a single day for having my chef go out and do his job you know mm -hmm. and so i'm just constantly looking for win-wins i get paid you get paid and someone gets happy you know i'm always looking for a way that everyone can win and uh and then i can profit at the end of the day as well you know those are those are definitely my priorities in like every situation oh that that completely makes sense but i think what audience would like to hear is like where do you start? Like, we, like it's 18 income streams and I would love to talk about, you know, the rest 16 uh, as well, but it's like, where do you start? Like how someone can get that hungry, as you said, you know, like that you just never stop. You just, you know, have your eyes peeled open and you're just looking for the opportunities, which is great. Like you spot them like randomly on Facebook scrolling and here we go, 400 bucks. I'm going to be making from that just from <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and don't get me wrong, it's not a lot of money, but you know what? It will cover dinner for a couple nights. You know oh, what I mean? It covers exactly. my chef for almost a week, you know? And so, um, you know, it, and, and that's how I look at everything, you know? So, you know, where do you start? You know, great question. And it's a simple answer. And you start with freeing up time so you can afford to be creative, you know? When I was a restaurant manager, I was working 75 hours a week. Dude, there was no creativity occurring other than my job. You know, I was a bad ass restaurant manager. I was like next level. My team loved me. My managers loved me. My coworkers, my employees, my customers. It was like amazing. But 
to perform at that level, I had nothing left, okay, to give to anybody after I got out of that. You know, you work uh, five 15-hour days. I had a two-hour commute. That's included in the 15 hours, you know. Um, and then, you know, then you get home and you're like, I'm laying the fuck down, okay? Like, I'm not doing anything. So, you know, the first thing I really had to do was free up my time, you know? So, you know, the next natural question was, how the fuck do we free up our time? <laughs> well, now I, now I think it's not a problem to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, you know, and it's funny you mentioned that. I remember when COVID first hit, a lot of people were upset and I've been retired for quite some time. So COVID really didn't change my life much. It changed the outside world. It didn't change my inside world, right? Yeah. I've been home for the last two years and stuff. Um, however, I kept reminding my audience on Facebook, like you've been praying for a break. This is it. You've been praying that you would get some time off. This is it. You've been praying that that things would change this is it you know so you know exactly what you said you know we're in this period right now where you can choose to look at it like it's the worst thing ever or you can choose to look at it like it's the best thing ever you know it's uh, it's it's completely up to us uh, how we want to do it you know with me it took massive change you know i was working 80 hours a week in the restaurant industry, I was only making $65,000 a year, which is actually pretty good money for restaurants, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and it's pretty good money for 25 years old too. It's not good money for 30 years old. It's not good money for 35 years old, right? Now, if I were to recap a little bit, the restaurant industry made me who I was today. You know, no, no doubt about it. 80 hour weeks, uh, customers were horrible. They were amazing too, but you know, they were horrible. Uh, my managers often sucked, like the people that I worked with and stuff, you know, the co-managers. So there's a lot of fun obstacles. And instead of like going to work and being upset, I just decided to like crush it every day. I'm going to go in, you're going to suck. That's okay. I'm going to be so great. You can afford to suck. You know what I mean? Oh, was kind yeah. of my attitude. And, you know, I did that for a long time. Right? And it was on the year I turned 30 was when I realized that I woke up and I was 30 years old and I had no idea where my 20s went. And I spent the whole time in the restaurant industry. And I said, you know what? I'm not upset, but I cannot wake up and be 40 one day and still be here. You know, that yeah. was a huge fear for me. Um, and you know, my fears are backwards. A lot of people are afraid of change. I'm different. I'm afraid of Not staying the same. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, but can I just ask you one question? Because uh, I just love, again, you, you, pour, you gave us some golden nuggets as you said, you know, this is the time, this is it. So this is what's, going, what's happening on Facebook. Because you imagine, guys, like this type of content is just dropping on a daily basis. So you should get in contact with Nicholas, first of all. But uh, it's like you, you mentioned so many great things. But first of all, if we start, uh, again, the time is available. But the question is, like, how do you get in that zone, you know, where you are creative, when you have ideas coming up, popping up, when you decided that whatever is going to happen at, at the job, I'm still going to, if, if somebody is going to suck, like they, they're going to be the negative person and whatever the customer is going to say, I'm still going to be the best that I can be myself. So like, and I understand that you got an idea like, oh my God, like all these years passed and it didn't change anything. So that decision, did that happen prior to you waking up and saying, I have to change and do something when you were 30? Or have you read something, listened to something, met somebody? Like who influenced you to make those type of decisions in life? So, well, uh, <laughs> this is actually really funny. So first of all, I had always, been, I'm, I'm a hardcore student, you know? My entire life, I'm like audiobooks, audiobooks. I, I used to commute two hours a day. And so on my way to work, I'm like crushing an audiobook that teaches me how to manage people. So then I would go to work and I would use everything I just learned, 
Now, some shit didn't work for me, right? Some other shit worked really, really well, you know? And so to answer your question in two parts was the books gave me the skills to change my life, right? Now I had to make the choice to change my life. There's a big difference there, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what actually motivated me, and I think a lot of people might be able to resonate with this, at least I know I can, was I'm so competitive, like crazy competitive. Like that's why the reason why I had the best attitude at work, because I need to be the best fucking employee that this company's ever seen. You know, nothing's going to stop me from being the best, not no shitty person, not no obstacle, nothing. So when, what happened was I, I was making a lot at, in, in my twenties and then I turned 30 and I ran into a couple friends and they're working 40 hours a week and they're making like, one of them's like, I'm making a hundred thousand. I'm making 130,000. I'm, and I'm like, what happened? You know? And when I was 25, I made the most. Yeah, I may have worked the most too, but I don't care. The re that restaurant shit's fun. You know? I used to joke and say, they make us work 12 hours because it feels like eight. <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, that was fun to me. So I didn't really look at the hours, but the salary, you know? And then I had friends beating me. And uh, like you check out that terminology, beating me, right? So that is when I started going like, I, that's when I started looking around and I started realizing a couple things. Number one, my worth was based off what someone else told me it was worth. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. You're worth $65,000 a year. Bitch, I'm worth $500,000 a year. You're getting me at discount for $65,000 a year, <laughs> you know? So that was the first realization. The next one was, I can't go up any higher, okay? So, I've, so I guess the answer is I took a close look at my life. After I realized I wasn't the highest paid person um, that I knew, and not that that matters, you could be in a circle full of broke people and be the highest paid person. So that's not really the best calibrator, but it mm -hmm. worked for me. But after I, after I took that in there, I then started realizing, you know, my bosses are miserable. You know, the people that I want to be one day, right? They're like, they're not good people. You know, my, my vice president was like working all the time and was very rude. My, one of my general managers always had an attitude. And I used this as a phrase. I was running out of role models. Okay. I, I had no, but if you don't want to be your boss, newsflash, this is not a career for you. If you don't look up to your boss and go, dude, this guy's amazing. He's happy. He's rich. He's everything. I have a goal, right? I was on that precipice of getting these promotions to general manager, vice president and stuff. And then I realized like, it's like climbing a mountain. And when you get there, you go, I don't even know why I'm doing this. You know, this isn't going to give me the satisfaction I'm actually looking for. So those things is what really drove me to say, I need to get out of here. It's time for me to go. Wow. That, that's a powerful, again, story. And uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, you know, with us. And okay, so you, you, you kind of get your mind right it was like okay i need to start making you know different decisions i need to you know do something different right so i guess i'm just guessing uh your first business came up probably not long ago when you started to make those decisions so what was your first business and what did you do to make it happen i mean how did it turn out is it still part of the 18 income streams like what's happening so uh, there's actually a, an intermission there. When I left that restaurant career, I actually left the industry, but still chose a career. Um, and I got hired inside of a real estate education company that taught people how to wholesale houses and flip houses. So I, had, I was an assistant. I got hired for 18 bucks an hour. I didn't even care. Just get me out of the restaurant, you know? At this point, 
Martin, I needed to prove to myself that I could do something different, right? After 16 years of doing the same thing and being really good at it, you tend to think you're, you can't even do anything else, mm. you know? Yep. So my first goal was to prove to myself that I can do other shit, <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, so I applied for a job as an assistant at this company, and I get it, okay? okay. Um, within eight months, I took on three promotions, and at the end of the eight months, I ended up becoming an executive at the company, uh, doing, uh, overseeing everyone who gets mentored at the company. I couldn't believe it. You well, know? It, it doesn't surprise me because you already had the work ethic of working 80 hours a week. So, right, Well, and just so you know, that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Like you think I'm scared of working after, after working in restaurants for 80 hours a week. That yeah. was like literally like looking back, it was literally the worst conditions you could have at work. And working in a restaurant, you know, now it doesn't mean I saw it that way while I was doing it, but compared to like working in a cush office, 40 hours a week, having a nice comfy chair and shit, you know, I didn't have that, you know, so now I'm an executive in an office and the truth is things started to, so now I proved it to myself, right? Mission accomplished. I can do something else. You know, and once that happened, <laughs> my ego really, really took the reins. And it was like, dude, you got this. You can do whatever you want to do, period. You know, I just went from garbage to champion in an eight-month period. And then I, I held that position for three years as an executive. Um, and it was interesting. So if I recap here, restaurants taught me how to hire, fire, and run a physical business, hands-on business. So I had all this knowledge. Then when I became an executive at this real estate education company, it was all digital. Mm -hmm. They taught me that I don't have to be in the same room as anybody to make money. You know, as to where one of the side effects of the restaurants are, if you're not in the room, <laughs> it's not going down, right? So it was a big paradigm shift. I saw the writing on the walls. I was like, wow, I can take everything I learned in the restaurant industry, apply the softwares I picked up in the education industry, and then create a virtual restaurant, if you will, for lack of a better term. So, and I'll just, this, I'll wrap this second part of the story up real quick. When I became an executive, of course, I didn't see eye to eye with the other executive leadership, right? I came from a restaurant career and that's hard. Just so you know, Martin, everyone shits on restaurant employees. You know, I was in this career and they kept telling me, you know, don't talk about your restaurant experience. Don't do this. Don't do oh. that. It makes you look dumber. What? Are you kidding me? Like, that's what made me amazing. And you're asking me to pretend like it didn't, you know? Um, but needless to say, we had issues, <laughs> okay? But it wasn't performance. My job was being performed at a high level. But the truth was, I just wasn't meshing with everyone else. You know, an office worker who's been working in offices their whole life, yeah. and then a restaurant worker who's been working in restaurants, we really don't mesh well. You know, um, at restaurants are very in your face. You know, they're, they're, there's no hiding uh, in a restaurant, you know. So anyways, things got rocky, and I did what I think a lot of people don't do, okay? And I just asked. And I go to the CEO and I ask if I can do all of my responsibilities from home. I said, let me work from home. You can cut my pay. I don't care. Let me work from home. Okay. And they actually said yes. And, and they cut my pay in half. Right. So I went from $70,000 a year to $35,000 a year. And I'm making $750 a week salary now. But I'm working from home. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of I used to I used to work 80 hours in a restaurant for that same pay. Now I'm working from home. And the cool thing about me was my whole job was systematized. So I didn't have to 
uh, work that much. You know, when you have everything systematized, you now only have to show up when there's a problem. You know, exactly. like I always like to use plumbers, for example. You don't hire a plumber to stand in your house till a pipe leaks, do you? You only call a plumber when a pipe is leaking, right? Well, when, you, when I had such a great handle on my position, I only had to work when a pipe was leaking because everything else was figured out. So I wasn't even working that much. So here's what I did. Here's when I created my first business. Now to pick up off of your original question. I went home and I, I, I was kind of defeated. I was like, career one, didn't like it after 16 years. Career two, didn't like me <laughs> after three years, right? So now I'm like, what's next, Nick? What the hell are you gonna do? So I decided to buckle down and I started making 300 to 600 cold calls a day for myself. I was trying to use the real estate education program for myself to now close my first real estate deal, right? I'd ran this program for three years and I've seen a lot of people get successful. And it was, the, and it was flipping deals, right? Yeah, it was, it was wholesaling or flipping or buy and holds is what we educated people on. What I was looking to do particularly was just to wholesale because I was broke making $750 a week, right? So I'm just looking for a wholesale deal at the time. Well, I call every day because I have no path. You know, for the first time in my life, I'm the path. You know, and I think a lot of career people can resonate with this. We get so used to someone else telling us how to spend our day when you have a career. When it becomes up to you, it's, it's scary. It's, you're, you're, you feel vulnerable. It's almost some kind of comfort in doing what your boss says every day, right? It's a kind of like, hey, you told me to do it, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when you're your own boss, hey, I told myself that was a big mistake, you know? Um, so I go home and I cold call for three months. I make over 22,000 dials myself. And I'd wow. never done this before. I was horrible, Martin. I like the worst you've ever seen. I, I was nervous, I was scared. And you what know you, what, what else you, I, do you still remember what you used to say when you used to call these uh, you know, uh, people trying to buy their properties while wholesale? Not, not only do I remember it, Martin, but I actually recorded my first 22 days ever of wow. cold calling. So to this day, I still own all of that footage. <laughs> and I'm actually, I should start releasing it one day at a time. You know? for, pe for people to learn what not to do, right? Yeah, exactly. And to learn how much we can fail forward. Yeah. I mean, to this day, I know your audience doesn't know a lot about me. I now own America's largest lead generation company that uses cold calling, text messaging, and skip tracing. 20, so, 22,000 calls later, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I literally had mastered it in those 22,000 calls, but it's only because I had mastered restaurants before that. I had mastered executive education before so that. Everything comes just in place, right? Yeah, and it really did. You know, looking back, it's like, it's like this was handed to me almost, but in a way that you can't see it. Yep. It's not like, oh, well, I learned this and I learned that. Well, now I'm going to go do this. You know, we have to put the puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I go home and I'm looking for my first deal. Well, spoiler alert, it never came. Okay. I'm looking for my first real estate deal and I'm getting stressed out now because I'm three months in, I'm still making seven fifty a week and I've got no other income. And I worked for three months at this point for free, if you really want to consider it, you know, because I haven't made a dime off of it. Well, then one day, this guy calls. Hey, Nick, I see you've been cold calling. You know, I don't have any time. Do you think you could call for me? Yeah, sure, 150 bucks. Two days later, hey, Mario just told me you were calling for him. Do you think you could call for me too? Sure, 150 bucks a week. Then I had another guy, and then I had a coaching client sign on, somebody that worked with me through Clever, 
or through the company I worked at. And then they wanted me to coach them one-on-one. -on -one. And I was like, yeah. So now all of a sudden, I'm making the same I was as an executive working full time, but I'm only working like seven hours a week. So, you know, I, I start seeing, I was like, I was like, is something happening right now? You know, like, it's kind of like when you drink, when you drink something and you're like, what was that? You know, <laughs> um, it was very similar. So um, I could really feel the magic entering my life just to be honest with you. And as someone who used to work 80 hours a week, I have a lot of gratitude to, towards working seven hours a week and making such great money. You know, like I, I kind of paid my dues just somewhere else, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I, uh, I end up, this is, this is true, it's a true story. I, I have these four clients and then again, competition strikes me. I wake up one day and I see a Filipino inside of a Facebook group offering their cold calling services to the group. And I'm like, Nick, why? Like, don't, don't let these people beat you, bro. Like the way I feel, Martin, and the way all entrepreneurs should feel, I legit feel like I'm the best in the world at what I do. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the best in the world at what I do, and I let you go to my competition, I'm actually doing you a disservice, okay? Because now you're gonna go to someone who sucks, they're gonna take your money and piss you off, and now you're gonna be broke and hurt and wounded. When all I really, it's my responsibility to market my own business, but mm -hmm. so here's what happened. I see this post, you know, it's got broken English, it's all messed up, and. Hey guys, who want the calls? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead. And this is true. I type up this post. To this day, I have no idea what it said. It opened up with, hey guys, I've never done this before, or I don't normally do this, but I just wanted to tell you what I've been working on. I'm, and I started with all American. So when, a, when the foreign cold callers were were popping up, I was able to distinguish myself. We're all American. I didn't even have any foreign cold callers at the time. So I wrote this post, all American team, everyone lives in America, let me know if you're interested. Over 300 people commented their email addresses on that post. It was crazy, in one day, in one day, it was crazy. I have never, to this day, experienced it or seen anything like Man, that. You, where, where's, where's the recipe? I think people would like to get the recipe for that text message. Well, you know, and, and that's funny. That's actually where the story ends. And that is, so what happened was all these people reply. I end up emailing them all the same day. I stayed up till 2 in the morning. I emailed all 370 people or whatever the number was. And I stayed up till two in the morning making it all happen. The next day I wake up and I'm excited to see how many more people commented. And the post was deleted. Okay. Wow. By the group admin who I end up talking to him. I go, I didn't know I did something wrong at the time. You know what I mean? I said, what did I do wrong? And he said, man, you didn't do anything wrong. You're not supposed to self promote. And he said, but lucky for you, I was out on my boat all day. And I didn't have cell phone service. So he goes, if I would have seen your post, I would have deleted it right away. Instead, I didn't check my phone till this morning. Time and that's when yeah. I saw it. And so the, the big lesson here is if I would have said, I'll take care of this tomorrow, mm. I wouldn't be here. Literally, I wouldn't be here right now, you know? Oh. This so, is talk, not, so, so talking about taking on opportunities when you see them, that's exactly how we started the conversation when you said you saw the post for the chef. So we're doing right. kind of exactly the same thing. You follow your, you know, yeah. so you, you just take on what's, what's there right now. It's like, man, you have to use opportunities because that post will disappear. Or somebody else will, will take on that, you know, offer. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. You're, you're exactly right. And so, you know, there's so much to taking action that I think a lot of people really discredit, they don't understand, and you know, and they think that tomorrow is a fine answer. And the truth is, it's not. You know, I've made over $2 million since I posted that post. And I could tell you the truth, 
if, if, if I didn't send those emails, well, here's what happened. So I get off the phone with the guy that deleted it. Well, all the calls start coming in from all the emails. I signed up 20 customers that day, 20 customers. And then I called my boss at the education company and I quit. Okay. I was like, I'm out. To this day, I bet you, Martin, I could still be working there for $750 a week. However, I didn't, I don't want to do that. I wasn't happy there. I don't want to be a part of something I'm not happy with you know, and I quit right away. And, you know, and it was amazing. And ever since that day, lead mining has been averaging at least $9,000 a week ever since I made that post. And, you know, it was absolutely life changing. And that, that, that was my first business. That's still my business. This year, we're on track to do over $800,000 in sales. It's gonna be our biggest year yet, which is great because it's our third year in business. Um, that's exactly how it should be, <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, but you know, and it's really, it's really been, you know, amazing. And I, and, I, and I still got my baby. Yeah, well, that's, that's, I mean, what else to say? I mean, you just closed it perfectly. I mean, that's, that's what happens when, you know, because the entire thing, the the entire story again because i do understand you're a free spirit you want to do things for yourself and you know you, you you're looking to grow and sometimes you just overgrow the people that are around you uh yeah. mentally so but i think the entire thing the the recipe the core piece you know in this game and the businesses that you're creating for yourself and you know helping all these companies around you is the work ethic you know, is the thing is the thing that lacks so much in the society because nobody wants to work anymore because everybody, right. everybody feels like they're, you know, just, you know, you, you go on Facebook and it's there. It's instant. Everything is instant. You know, you don't have to work for things anymore. So, yeah. you know, if you have that advantage, which you carry, carry that till this day, uh, you're going to carry through the COVIDs, the recessions, everything, yeah. you know, those people strive and survive and dominate the industry. So I think, yeah. I think that's the, the core thing and the core piece that I know I would take away because I, I do, I'm exactly on the same page. I believe that the work ethic can conquer everything, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I've been lucky, you know, I've, I've, I've had a computer since age six, you know? So I have like a really, I noticed that that's really helped the way my brain works, you know? Um, I'm, I'm really good with software. I'm really good with people, you know, so like I was actually a computer nerd at heart and I was forced into the restaurant industry and I became a people nerd, you know, I was able to take, oh, this is how a computer works. Well, then once I got into the restaurant, I said, oh, this is how people work, you know, and now I'm gaining this, what I call a fundamental understanding of things. And then once you have the fundamental, in my opinion, if you've mastered one thing, you can master anything yeah. because you can now take the fundamentals that may allowed you to master the one thing and then apply it to anything that, that you want. Exactly. So again, it's just so many different pieces that I think people should take away from this conversation that we, you know, covered yet. Uh, because again, that's, I think a lot of people in similar situations right now, and a lot of those people don't even have the job. Again, we talked about the time. The time is now available and you get the creativity by maybe thinking, you know, how do you solve somebody else's problem instead of thinking about your own problems? And there's a lot of mind shifts that go along the way. So there's a lot of great books that I'm sure you know, you know, a lot of them, you, you still probably read a ton of those and people can go and search. I mean, we probably don't even need to tell what these books are. Cause it's so easy to find because that's what it's all about. You know, we can talk about, Oh, this is the books. This is what you're going to do. This is the, the, you can lay out all the secrets, but what's the percentage of people that are actually going to go and do something about it. You know, totally. You know, one thing I say, Martin, is people go, aren't you afraid someone's going to duplicate your business? So no, I'm the secret sauce. Exactly. Okay. It's not, uh, uh, you know, all of my customers know and anyone watching this, if you go to my website, that's my cell phone number on the website. It goes right here, you know? So like, and I'll tell you anything. I'm like a hundred, I'll tell you how we train. I tell you how we hire, how we fire, how we serve. It doesn't matter. That's not, that's not the secret sauce. 
you know, the secret sauce is the fact that my cell phone's on the website. My secret sauce is the fact that I've got so much free time that all I want people to do is talk to me now, which is why I took, you know, the podcast. I, 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 I'll talk to anyone about anything, Martin. Like, you know, I, I don't give a shit, you know? Um, and so, you know, it's, it's just, it, it's just, it's important to understand that, you know, you know, it's the way that we put the stuff together. I've learned a lot about packaging, how we package things together and present them is, you know, crucially important. Mm. Well, what do you, what do you mean by that packaging? Why is that so important? Well, so like, for example, my service, is really just me having other people do the work, right? Yeah. But it's about how I package it. It's about like, I offer completely done for you turnkey lead generation, right? Well, there's a bunch of companies out there that sell VAs for six or $7 an hour. That's mm -hmm. not what we do, right? So I've kind of taken that package and I made it better. I made yeah. it prettier. You know, and so it's just in, you know, and what I'm doing isn't special and it really can apply to anything. I took what someone else was doing and I just made it better. And I, you know, I didn't, I just packaged it with a better bow and better wrapping paper. And there's my, and there's probably a better gift inside of there too, <laughs> as, a, as a result of it, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, I've really learned a lot about packaging and presentation, you know, and lead mining. You know, we only started off with three services. You know, we offer seven now. And, um, and, and I've had to continue to innovate. Just to, to be transparent, Martin, if I kept those three services, again, I'd be broke right now. I wouldn't mm. be living on the water in my 200 square foot tiki hut. You so know, it's, I, so it's I'd all about in, innovating and moving forward and growing and ideas and implementing, yeah. Right. And, you know, I would sit at home and most of this comes from conversations. Customer, yep. hey, do you offer this, 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 and this? And I go, no, but I should, Yeah, you know, and it's kind of, you have to be humble and vulnerable. Yes. You can't be like, we got it all figured out. Don't you tell me how to do my job. No. Hey, you know, you know, I talked to a woman today who, who I gave a discount to because she bought like 10,000 of one product. And it hits me, why don't I offer this to everybody, you know? So in one conversation where I make $1,000, I, I now ask myself, how can I duplicate this one conversation? You know, like I, I leave no stone unturned. And, you know, I always said, if I had a superpower, it would be the ability to extract way more experience out of a situation than what's available. Wow. That, okay. that is powerful. Yeah. yeah. You know, whenever I go through something, I got ADHD. I'm sure that's a little prevalent right now, but you know, whenever I go through something, I think about everything. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What feedback am I getting? What feedback am I not getting? Which is, even more important, right? Because people will not walk up to you and tell you you suck, okay? That's just not something that they'll do. They'll stop calling. They'll, you know, they'll do all this other shit, but they will not tell you you suck, okay? So, you know, it's important to think about, you know, what you're not hearing. Exactly, exactly. I, uh, I, I apply all those things. That is, that is awesome. So where's the company right now, the League Mining? How many people do you have working for you currently? We have, uh, I want to say 16, somewhere between 14 and 16 employees. I, 11 of them are virtual assistants and five of them are Americans. Um, everyone works from home. Everyone works whenever they want to. I don't write schedules for anyone. Um, you know, there's a couple of people where I say, look, I do need you working from nine to this time. But other than that, it doesn't matter. You know, so I would like, I got a guy that does all my emails and everything. And so I'm like, look, I need you during business hours, you know, but other than him, everyone creates their own schedule. Uh, I don't have an office building. So that allows me to spend more on a place I live. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, you know, um, I don't have all those additional overhead expenses. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it, it's been great.
Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love the idea that you have 16 people currently working and I'm sure you have uh, big enough business goals by the way it sounds, the way you talk and present yourself. I'm sure you're going to double that, triple that by maybe, you know, year or two, maybe faster. Who knows? Uh, if you, if you want to do that, of course. But, uh, you know, it seems like the things that you're working on is like systemizing, you know, putting system in place, leveraging people and their time, uh, you know, which is crucial if you want to build a business. And if you're hi like hiring 16 people, that means you've been going through, you know, a few bad apples, you know, you hired some good people. I didn't so maybe you can share, you know, your first uh, employee kind of conversation, the interview and lessons that, that you learned while hiring people. A great question. Well, I've been blessed, Martin. So I'm going to be honest with lead mining. I've only fired two people ever at lead mining. Huh. Everyone else is still in a great relationship with me. And we probably had 40 employees with us over time, but not everyone. Some people just fade out, you know, just how like an Uber driver, they just stop working for Uber. They don't yeah. get fired. They don't quit. They just don't do it anymore. You know? Yeah. So uh, I've been blessed in lead mining. However, that's only because I've hired over a thousand people as a restaurant manager, you know? So uh, I will share a couple of things that are very important. And that is, well, to me, one thing matters. I only care about one skill set. That's eagerness. Okay. You show me an eager employee and I'm going to get rich as fuck, dude. Okay, you know, you show me someone who's wanting to learn and willing to do better and all that. I don't even care about the other skills. I really don't, you know. So that being said, my complete hiring process at Lead Mining tests their eagerness every step of the way. And this allows us to weed out the wrong employees and keep the right ones. So I'll explain my hiring system to you, okay? In order to get a job at lead mining, you only need one requirement, and that is that you have to be able to type 45 words a minute, okay? That's it. And that's because while you're talking on the phone, you have to be able to type fast enough to not slow you down, okay? So that's like a quality assurance thing. And that's not that fast either. For those people going, oh, 45, oh, you know, I can type 90 to 110 uh, myself. And, you know, 45 might be a week worth of practice if you currently can't, right? So anyone, he, here's how it works. Hey, I'm hiring 12 to $15 an hour. You need to type 45 words per minute. You need to have the internet have a com and to have a computer. Okay, that's it. Okay, Someone messaged me, Nick, I'm interested. I say, great, you got the job. Good news, you got the job. Now. Quickest two, interview ever. Yeah, all right. Two things. One, take this typing test and prove to me you can type 45 words per minute. Send me the screenshot when you're done. Now, I never follow up with that person again. Again, I'm testing their eagerness. Okay, I'm not a micromanager, so I'm not gonna stand over your fucking shoulder and make sure you get the work done. That's not me. So I can't hire you based off that relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I now say, take this typing test. Let me know when you're done. If they never message me back, they're fired. Okay, it's that yeah. simple. Then if they do message me back, I say, great. Thank you so much. Now what I want you to do is watch this one hour training video of me. That's exactly what the whole job entails. Watch this one hour training video and let me know when you're done. Same thing. If they never hear from, if, if I never hear from them again, they're fired, okay? They don't get another chance. It doesn't work like that, okay? They, they message me back. Hey, Nick, I don't even care if it's a week later. Hey, Nick, I finished the video, blah, 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 blah. Great. Good news. Now you're actually hired. Okay. You know, and so now I give them, uh, my manager trains with them for five hours a week. We work out all the kinks. 
And I can tell you, Martin, those who respond the quickest and get the task done and, and don't need follow up, they're my best employees. So I created this system that automatically weeds out really shitty people. And not even that they're shitty. They're just not really in it to win it. Yeah. You know, my, my people work from home. So I really need them eager because it's so easy to work from home and get up and not work. You know, it's so easy to, you know, get up and go, you know what? I'm not doing this today. And, you know, I don't want those people on my team if I can prevent it. So that's kind of the number one thing I've learned about hiring people. You got to test their eagerness. You know, the same system, I'm sure each person watching can apply that to their own hiring process, but don't follow up with them. You're not desperate for a shitty employee, okay? You're desperate for another badass who you need working in your business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, once a uh, very smart, intelligent person told me exactly the same thing. He told me, Martin, always hire uh, over you know, person's, uh, you know, qualities rather than skills, you know, so just always look for attitude. That's what he told me, right. you know, because that will drive the person further than, you know, oh, I have the degrees, I have that, which doesn't do anything in real life. You know, if you have yeah. the attitude, if you're willing to learn, willing to, because again, if the person has his own personal goals to make X amount of money or, you know, to do whatever, you know, accomplish something, that, that's gonna that's gonna do far more than you know having a degree or you know something like that Absolutely. So, please. i was gonna say i was gonna say you know and, and it's our job to become the teacher you know exactly. and, and you know what the good thing about teaching i just want to drop this knowledge on everyone real quick is if you teach them you can now pay them less i don't mean to sound rude or disrespectful but if i go and hire the vice president of google it's going to cost me a lot of money. If I find some guy with a badass attitude who's sweeping floors and I turn him in to the VP of Google, it's going to save me a shitload of money. It's going to make, you know? a, it's going to make a lot of money too. So. Exactly. So, you know, I always think, you know, it's our job at that point to be the teacher once we find those qualities. Yeah. So again, it's coming back to the work ethic because you have the, you know, the patience probably, you know, sure. to, to go through those people. And again, maybe don't, you don't take it because again, the system that you have, uh, it's very simple and that's the key, you know, in any business, just to simplify that everybody can understand, you know, five, five-year-old kid could understand what the business is all about. And the system is so easy and it's so easy for you to weed out all the people that might not be fit, uh, for, for your company. So I love it. You know, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, but talking, talking about the 18 income streams, maybe we're not going to cover uh, the entire 18, but uh, maybe we can talk about is, is uh, some of those businesses are in a similar fields. Like what type of businesses uh, are they? Well, just so you know, not everything's a business, right? So for me to qualify something as an income stream, it just has to be an area of my life that's profitable. So um, I'm going to get into that more creative aspect. So what I've done, and I'll actually whip the camera around here real quick. Um, we were just talking about this before. You know, I live on the water. Well, this place is expensive, as I'm sure you can imagine. And the first thing I did is I bought a bunch of kayaks for me and my friends so we can go out whenever we want to. Now I'm living on the water, sitting on like eight kayaks and three paddle boards. And I'm like, why don't I rent these things out? So I created a kayak rental company that's been averaging about $150 a week profit. And the truth is I'm home all day anyways. So someone shows up, they give me 60 bucks and they take off, you know, and it's really nice. You know, I get to meet and see someone and talk to them. And so that's one example of another stream of income. Another example that's probably going to shock the shit out of everyone is my cell phone bill. Okay. I've literally turned my Verizon cell phone bill into a profit center. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so I'll explain how I do it. So Verizon is really expensive if you're all by yourself. 
okay? So if you're one line on Verizon, and a lot of people watching this may know it already, you're paying about 140 bucks a month for your cell phone service for one person, okay? Verizon, not until you get three or four or five people, does it start only being $35, $45 per person. So here's where I've been lucky. I used to have a, when my business first came out, I gave all my executive cell phones, okay? Hey, I'll pay for the cell phone, easy perk for both of us, you know what I mean? Um, I'll pay for the cell phone, here you go, saves you 90 bucks a month, you know, I'm getting it for a decent deal, it was pretty cool. Well, as time went on, I saw I didn't really have to do that, you know, so whether those people don't work for me anymore or whatever, I ended up um, uh, taking the cell phones back at some point or another. Well, I gave one to a friend who pays me 90 bucks a month and he, he gets a phone, he gets service. And you know what? If he was by himself, the same phone would, it would cost him $160. So he's saving 50 to $70 a month and I'm probably making $25 profit a month off of it. Not, not the biggest deal, right? However, Martin, I got seven of those people now. Okay, so even though my cell phone bill is like $400, I'm like collecting $600 a month in other people's money to pay their bill. Then I got lucky. One of the people I put on my account ended up getting a job at Verizon. <laughs> okay. So then that cut my bill in half again. And I still have those discounts, okay? So now when someone comes on, I still charge them the same. If they don't have a phone or if they don't need a phone, it's only $50 if they have their own phone already. And if they do need a phone, it's about $90. And either way, both those prices are way cheaper than the 140 to 170 that they would be paying if they were by themselves. So something as simple as the cell phone bill is making me $200 a month profit, okay? And so for me, that's a stream of income, right? It is. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and that's my attitude. You know, to everyone watching, I leave no money on the table, none. I am fucking here to make money. I'm here to live my life in a passive way. I want, my vision now is that that company, Lead Mining, covers my retirement and my passive income cover my daily living expenses. That is my current goal. Another thing that I do that I'll share with you that I think is unorthodox and really smart is I bought a house in Phoenix. Okay. Three bedroom house. It's not that big. $1,500 a month mortgage. I buy the house in Phoenix I then decided to move to Florida. My dad got sick, so I came home. He's doing better now, but I came home and I kept my house in Phoenix. Well, at the time, I had all these friends and they all needed a place to stay. So I literally, I left all my furniture, everything, and I just flew home to Florida and I bought all new furniture, okay? And when I did that, I now rent each room inside of the house for $750 a month. Now, I cover all the utilities. I cover electricity, Wi-Fi, stuff like that, okay? Um, and so all that is covered, you know? Now, in addition to that, I bought a travel trailer, okay? For those who don't know, that's what you'll see like trucks tow behind them. Yep. It's not a fifth wheel. Fifth wheels connect in the center of the truck. A travel trailer is just towed on a hitch, okay? So I bought a travel trailer that's 32 feet long and I put it in my backyard and I ran plumbing to it, okay? So I rent that out too. So I literally have a single family property in Phoenix making me $3,200 a month, okay? Now, my cost is about $1,800 a month, 
on average. So it makes me almost 14, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but that's almost $1,400 in profit a month from one property. Okay. You know, and that's huge. That is huge. So I think like some of those creative strategies is what really allows me to like kind of probably do less than the average person is, but make more than the average person does. Mm. Oh, definitely. Man, you're coming up with a lot of great ideas. And I'm sure every time with you speaking with somebody, because again, you're always looking for those is like, what can I take from the conversation? Even if it's not there, like you, you're always searching for deeper meanings and you, you, you're always looking to squeeze something, you know, from, from situations. So that is awesome. If you're doing that constantly, which I'm sure you do, because it looks like you're living this lifestyle, which is, which it is a lifestyle. Uh, when I talk with the business owners also, you know, they always, a lot, a lot of those people have a perspective is like, okay, I'm, I'm having a business five days a week and, you know, two days off kind of, you know, it, it seems like they're still working for somebody where yeah. it's supposed to be a lifestyle and that's what you're living. You, you're just living this life and you're creating everything around you. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's the right, that's the right approach to take. I think. You know? And thank you, Mark. You know, I always tell my friends, I always joke and I go, you know, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm either never working or I'm always working. I don't really know which one it is, yeah. you know, and, and that's, and that is what I think is really the sweet spot. Yeah. You know, exactly. whenever, you know, I'm having, you, you really hit it right on the head. Now, sometimes I try to give myself a break, Nick, stop trying to squeeze all the juice out of this. You know what I mean? Sometimes I, I try to remind myself to like hit the brakes a little bit, you know, um, doesn't mean I do it, but I do. I try to have grace. Like I have a really hard time relaxing. I don't want to say like relaxing, but like oh, you do. You do the cryo, the massage, or seeing it, yeah. Right, but you know, like I can't like sit down and play video games like I used to. You know what I mean? As soon as I sit down and play video games, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like I got so much shit. I got it. Like this ain't making me money. You know. If it did, I'd probably be a lot happier with it. Yeah, you know, I'd probably be doing it a lot more. But you know, so like, I'm I'm trying to find a place where I'm happy with the grind. I will say, you know, one of the downfalls of being like me is like, I don't want to say I'm never satisfied, you know. But you know, I honestly, I, I and we all say this, you know, we all want to make more, you know. But like, I really, I, I kind of want everything to double before I, before I hit the brakes. You know, I've been working my ass off for a long time and, you know, there's not that much money in the bank. You know, I think we've done $2 million in sales. Granted, I spend a lot of money, but I only have about $300,000 in the bank, you know, and that's me being really transparent. That might sound like a lot, right? But it's not. You know, a fucking meteor hits tomorrow and I might be good for four years without additional income. That's not good enough. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not there yet. So, you know, making a lot of money has been really eye opening. You know, last year I paid the government alone 95,000 fucking dollars. Okay. Like what? Yeah. Who well, you, you, you made, you, you made an uncle Sam very happy that year. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, but that's a bill. Let me tell you what, when you got $95,000 in your bank account and you only have 300,000 to begin with, and then a third of that leaves, you know, let me tell you, it's like, you, you think you're making a lot of money. You're not, you know? And I think that's been the big eye opener for me. Um, now, like I said, I spend a lot of money, you know, I really do. Um, you know, I got a chef, I live on the water, you know, but still, you know, I mean, this, this is what happens now I need to 10 exit. So, you know, so I, I would just wanted to speak a little bit about, you know, the drive, how it's not always this super positive thing. You know, sometimes I just want to chill and lay down and think about nothing and stuff. And, you know, it doesn't, it, it's, I'm not really complaining. But, you know, once a month, I'm like, I just wish I could chill a little bit more, mm. you know? 
yeah it's all it's it, it's always on right yeah it's hard to switch it off once you right. try to switch it off it's like it, that's exactly if, if you've seen the elon musk interviews because this man is like walking genius on the planet earth you know he's he's trying yeah. to walk on mars right now so i mean the, the man is is just unbelievable human being you know it's like one in, once in a lifetime we get those type of people who are thinking that big and for this man you know multiple like having multiple business, you know, Tesla uh, with a gigafactory, you know, with the SpaceX, like running multiple businesses and knowing everything from accounting to, you know, uh, industrial parts creating, like he has, he's probably even hard, having a hard time to sleep as far as I imagine. Yeah. So, you know, for him, it's even like, it's super hard to switch it off, but you know, it's like, that's what uh, makes those, you know, things like flying to Mars or, you know, those ideas may make you happen, you know? So, right. so and sometimes, cause again, look, I, I think my idea is very simple saying, you know, it's like, we live in this world again, as, as far as we want to live good for ourselves, you want to take care of ourselves, our needs, and, you know, to support our lifestyle, but we here put for some reason. And maybe that reason is, you know, help others at the same time. And there's always a bigger mission, bigger cause uh, behind everything that we do. So, you, you know, and I think, you know, we should use that, you know, engine that you have in your head, you know, for, for those reasons, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it definitely pays off. And, you know, what I try to do now, Martin, is I, like you mentioned, I do cryotherapy, I do red light therapy, I do massages, you know, and I also throw parties every two weeks where I invite people over. I have like a musician who are friends of mine. You know, one thing I really try to do is a lot of people want to impact the world. And my honest goal is to impact my circle. Okay. Like, That's where it I'm, starts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to impact the world's too fucking big, man. Like <laughs> yeah. I got, you know, I got people hurting that are close to me. Yeah. Why wouldn't I start there? So what I do with a lot of my close friends, just like this chef, is I try to inspire them to find their own business, their own way, you know, and I really try to, you know, because I want them, I, I don't want to be the only friend I have that lives a life like this, you know, I want to have a team of friends that, you know, live lives like this. And so, you know, I'm always, you know, trying to help others. And my, my big thing is, Focus on your circle. And you know what? You can impact your circle today immediately. And you can do it for free. You can just call someone and ask them how the hell they're doing. And you're already going to impact your circle. You know, it's kind of like an easy goal <laughs> to accomplish as well. Yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I love that, that you're not selfish, you know, and you're looking to help. Other, which is the best thing that you can do, you know? But there's a lot of people is that still even though you're trying to help them, they like, if the person doesn't want to uh, help himself, it's very hard yeah. to give, uh, you can give the best advice ever in the world and it's going to make a gazillion dollars for him a year. And he's still not going to, you know, yeah. take, take on that because he has a different standards for himself and for his lifestyle. But, but you know, it, honestly, Martin, I like people like that. I'll be honest with you. I love it when someone wants help and by the time I'm done talking to them, they realize they don't want help. Does that make sense? Like, I actually like it. <laughs> because like, I'm like, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, it's like, it's not for everybody. Because right. th then they find out how much it actually takes to build right. something, to create something. Because it looks different on an Instagram post. But in real life, I mean, it's, it's like it's 24-7. Right, exactly. You know, I got, I got one friend. I'll just share a little story with you real quick. He goes, Nick, he goes, you're, you're doing it. And I just wish I was doing it. And I said, well, you know, what does doing it look like to you? He said, well, I want to make $100 an hour. I said, okay, you want to make $100 an hour? I said, I, I love it. So what's your current pay? He said, I make $1,100 a week right now. I said, okay. So if you got down to 11 hours a week and were still able to make $1,100 a week, you would be happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how many hours a week are you working now? I don't know, like 20? And I'm like, bro, you're, you're there. You know, you don't even realize it. You're there. You're actually living your own fucking dream right now i said you right now in order for you to go to 20 down to 11 you can make some tweaks 
doesn't mean you want to, right? But you can go down to 11 hours, but you don't want to. You know, and at the end of the conversation, he actually had a twinkle in his eye because he was so happy that he was already there. And I think that that's a big lesson for all of us. I have a, a saying that I created. I think I created it anyways. And it says, we have everything that we want. It just doesn't look the way we want it to. Wow. That's a great one. You know, there you go, by, by Nicholas Nick. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I've learned that from, because so many people, when I coach them and they end up quitting or not wanting it, it's, and I let them know, like, you don't want it because you're already living your dream. It just doesn't look the way you think it looks like my dream, but it doesn't. It looks like your dream, you know, and you created your life and you can change it at any time, you know. So it's almost like it's almost giving them the responsibility of where their life is, you know, but framing it in a good way rather than saying you're responsible for where you are. So if you're not happy be mad at yourself. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you've got everything that you want. Now you just want to do it better. You know, and we just have to make that decision. We cannot, I heard some guys say the other day, you cannot thrive while you're trying to survive. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you, you can't. So if you think that your shit sucks so bad and your situation is so horrible, you're never ever going to be successful while you're thinking yeah. like that. You again, know? yeah it's again making about those mental shifts and mental decisions because at the same at the same time like i, I spoke with so many people uh who are you know because most of the people you will notice that and i'm sure the audience who's listening will, will agree because you probably have friends because i know it's not you it's it's the friends uh who have this perspective on things like oh look i'm I'm here in this position, like in life. Uh, but look, there's people who are in worse positions. Nobody ever compares to the people who are ahead of them. And it's right. it's a very fun thing to watch, you know, like everybody, oh, there's, look, these people on the street, like, look, I have a bed, I have, I'm living in a room, like I'm renting and I'm, I'm good, you know? But try right. to look ahead, try to always look ahead. As you said, you know, having 300K in the bank is not the, you know, it's not the place that I wanna be because at the same time there is people in the business, and I'm sure you know a lot of people in a business who are making 300k a day. Right. So you know, so there is different levels, and always people should always look ahead because that's inspiring. You don't want to be inspired by you know homeless man on the street. You should be inspired by that, and you want to help him. That's good. But look yeah. ahead. Always look ahead and look for ways to do more. Yeah, you know, I heard someone say that. You know, it it can help thinking about oh, someone's got it worse than I do. But the truth is, it's not a sustainable thought, exactly. right? You can't, you can't do it forever. You know, when you're feeling down on yourself, it's a great thing to think about. But you know, when you're feeling up on yourself, it's time to compare yourself to somebody else. You know, it's time to, you know, level up. Um, and then, you know, have, and my, my big thing is grace, you know? I mean, I'm kind of a mess in a fun way. You know, I try to, like someone told me the other day, they go, Nick, you have such a big heart. I can't believe it. And I said, you know why I have a big heart? Because I think it takes a big heart to love me. That's why I have a big heart. You know, wow. because, because I can be a pain in the ass. Because I can be a lot to take on. And so if I want people to have a big heart with me, I need to do it first. You know, I need to make sure I'm loving on them first, you know, and, uh, and, you know, and that's, that, that, that's grace, you know, that, that really gets you there. Um, you know, and I make a lot of mistakes. I do a lot of shit, right. You know, but you know, just today I'm not wearing my glasses. I'm sure you noticed I went swimming. I, I did a two hour, I did a one hour morning yoga and then a two hour beach swim. Well, I left my glasses on and things were great until the last 30 minutes and a fucking wave comes and hits me like a brick in the face and and I and I lose my glasses in the ocean you know cost me 300 bucks uh, to get a new pair and I had to call my assistant and bring me because I, I'm so blind I can't drive home without my glasses you know and so my assistant had to bring out and you know it, today cost me 300 bucks but you know what I had the best morning ever 
And I can't sit here and dwell on losing glasses in the ocean. I can learn my lesson. Next time I'm gonna wear contacts to the beach. <laughs> Next time I'm gonna bring backup glasses. But you know what? Today's lesson cost me 300 bucks and I'm refusing to be upset by it. I'm yeah. just, I'm choosing to learn, you know? So those, yeah. th those are, and I'm just giving a direct example of my grace for myself. I could have easily said, Martin, I can't make it. I'm all upset. I, I lost 300 bucks today. You know, I try so hard to make money and make and, profit. And, yeah, and I would be comforting you saying, oh, Nick, it's going to be fine. And it's the entire thing. It's the story. Uh... You know, and but instead, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I'm having a great morning. I've had one of the best mornings I've ever had this morning. Yeah. And you know what? If that cost me 300 bucks, that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's have it. That's the best it. Best mornings I've had. You know, man, I, I love your approach. I love the mindset and the approach that you're having. You know, in life and business, and I mean, Thanks. you know, what's how, how? That's what it takes to create like 18 income streams, and doesn't matter. It's you're getting paid through Verizon or it's through lead mining, but that's what it takes. You know, like it's impossible, and that's what want to you know have you on a show and kind of you know pick your brain a little bit and kind of understand the way you think and the way you do things. And, you know, now it's, it's very clear for me, like how do you came up like with all these streams of income and how did you create it and still creating the lifestyle that you want? So, I mean, and all the secrets that you have, you basically kind of laid out to the people and I'm, and I know you have so much more to give because you're just a giver, you know, again, spending this quality time here with me, you know, sparing the time, even though I don't want to remind you lost the glasses, you had this, you know, morning uh, things going on. But yeah. I would love to pe for people to get in contact with you uh, more, maybe ask a few questions, because I know there's a lot of people going through a lot of difficult times. And again, they need that inspiration, they need those golden nuggets that you're dropping daily. So what will be the best uh, platforms for people to go uh, in contact with you and, you know, follow you and to get those, uh, you know, valuable pieces? You know, F Facebook is my jam. You know, I'm like, I'm the man when it comes to Facebook. You know, I am, I am all over that. Um, you know, my name's Nicholas Nick. You can, I don't know if it shows up. It shows up on my uh, Zoom chat here, but that's my actual full name. That's not a nickname. It's not a joke, <laughs> you know, it's actually my name. Um, and so, you know, I recommend searching me out there. And if I don't pop up there, I recommend, um, you know, searching for my business on Facebook, lead mining, um, I'll pop right up and then I handle everything. So if you message me on lead mining, it's gonna come to me directly. Um, so, you know, no matter what, you can go to my website and call me directly. You can go to my business page and message me or my personal page and message me. And guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really an open book. You know, I'm not going to judge anything. I try to help people all day long. And uh, to be honest with you, it's a part of my recipe for success. You know, I never stop giving. And as a result, people never stop giving to me. And it's a part of the cycle that I'm in. So, you know, any of your audience and you yourself, Martin, you know, if anybody needs anything even if it's just encouragement you know nick tell me about your worst day at work i'm having a bad fucking day today you know <laughs> whatever it might be you know let me let me make your day a little easier man that is awesome and it's much appreciated because you know there's look there there's not a lot of people who are willing to give their time which is the the most precious thing that we have in this life is is our time so the fact that you're willing to do that, you know, for the people, it just is just unbelievable. So uh, from the old audience, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying big thank you, you know, really appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, Martin, you know, and I'll share this one last nugget, why I have that attitude. Not only did I mention I'm in like a flow and it's a part of my recipe, but every time I say something out loud, I learn something. Every time we, I have these conversations with you, some of the comments you made, some of the things you extracted out of my story, I didn't even know were there. You know what I mean? And so well, every time I engage in a conversation, I walk away smarter. So then I ask myself, why the hell don't I want to do that every chance I get? You know, so that's, that, that's just kind of my philosophy you know, but like, 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 and you know, and I didn't realize it until this podcast, 
I forget how many tips and tricks I have to be the person that I am today. And I think you did an amazing job at flushing those out of me um, because I think even I didn't realize that I am a part of my own system right now. I created a system of life, if you will, and that is to serve others, to help others, to be available, you know, and, and to, not, to not get jaded, to not get upset, to never worry about oh well i wasted my time i never feel ever unless i'm like waiting at the doctor's office for two hours to get called but other than that i if i'm spending time talking to someone i never feel like that is a waste you know of definitely. of my time. definitely awesome awesome so again guys uh make sure to contact nicholas nick uh of course i'm gonna put all the links in the description so you can follow and uh, add him as a friend on Facebook. That's Nicholas Nick. Uh, go and check it out. Lead Miners on Facebook, leads.mining on Instagram. Again, if you have a real estate business, again, getting qualified leads is something that should be uh, paying attention to. And again, he's successfully providing that for, I'm just guessing I'm going to say thousands of different, uh, yeah. you know, companies uh, across US and probably going to take over the globe uh, also. Yeah. So, it's it's been a, again it's been a pleasure and a great time talking with you today guys if you enjoyed this episode uh i'm just gonna ask you to share it with your friends uh make sure to drop it in in a message you know on facebook to your friend and say hey listen it doesn't matter that the morning started awful but there's always some things that you can tweak and improve and change your life you know going from today so i appreciate you guys watching i'm gonna see you on the next episode